one of the key steps that you need to take when you're chasing down a comic book is actually acquiring the book. And sometimes you need to get a little creative. Hey there, I have two comic book unboxings in this video. Uh, they're both small orders, so it'll go pretty quickly, but uh, I had to get a little creative when I was uh, doing some searching and hunting for some books. I did look at uh, one of my primary sources for comic book back issues, which is Atomic Avenue. But the creativity came in uh, into play when I was looking at condition. I primarily focus on books listed in Near Mint, Mint, 9.8 Raw, things like that. I love to acquire raw books and see if they're possibly misgraded in my favor or uh, maybe that they have a pressable defect of some kind. And I feel like once a book has been slabbed, it's done. It is what it is. It's graded. It's encased. There's really nothing that can be done about it, and there's no speculation on what grade it could get. So what I started to do is introduce a little bit of additional uh, condition flexibility, I would say, in my process. So as I'm going through books and I'm looking at availability and condition, I've expanded it to now get into conditions around uh, very fine and near mint, uh, very fine and all the way down to fine condition because there's certainly value in those lower grades when the book is desirable or even peaking in desirability. And I have, a, I think, a few examples of that or, or at least a couple in, in these uh, orders that I placed recently with Atomic Avenue. Um, Another thing is I'm having fun going back and reading uh, older books. I love to uh, read Silver and Bronze Age comics digitally. It's certainly not the same as kind of smelling that old uh, newspaper print, but I don't have to stress about uh, dealing with the conditioner or me further damaging it or getting uh, Cool Ranch Doritos fingerprints on it or, or anything like that. Um, so I can read it comfortably digitally at my own pace, uh, wherever I want. But oftentimes what happens is I'll read a book uh, from, uh, you know, 60s, 70s, early 80s, and uh, either really enjoy it or enjoy the significance of it. And I'll go and see if I can hunt for the regular issue online. Uh, so there's an example of that sort of uh, scenario here in these two orders as well. So let's get to the unboxing. Um, it's going to be, I think, four comic books total. And I'm going to go ahead and open each one and actually grade them. And then we'll kind of see based on what I paid and based on the condition that they were listed in versus the condition I think they're in. And uh, just kind of see if my analysis paid off in terms of how I was researching and analyzing uh, grades that are lesser than near mint, which is what I'm, I typically try and target. So let's get to the uh, unpacking of these orders and see what I got. All right, here we go. This is uh, the first of two orders that I placed uh, with Atomic Avenue, and I placed them uh, less than a week ago. So uh, both of these orders were shipped first class. Uh, we don't do media mail around here. Um, that's a no-no. Uh, don't want to send or receive it, but sent first class. Uh, and this, uh, both of the orders were from two sellers that I had not ordered from before because I noticed that a lot of um, these particular sellers' books were listed um, below near mint. So in some way, shape, or form, uh, just not near mint. But uh, again, it was kind of a follow-up to my more recent video when I talked about... Um, when you're chasing a book or you're chasing a, a grade of a book, are you chasing the grade? Are you chasing the chase itself? What is it that you're looking for? And in this particular case with these uh, four books that I bought, um, it was really about acquiring the book. 
uh, it was about acquiring each one and they each had their own reasons. It could be uh, value, um, nostalgia. I read the book. Um, I read the book recently, uh, maybe speculation news, things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and unpack the first order and, and then we'll grade each of the books uh, inside each of the two orders and see how I did. Here we go. All right, uh, the old newspaper wrapping, um, safe and secure. Uh, I would much prefer bubble wrap, but um, I guess we're gonna go with newspaper. All right, here we go. Hopefully there's, yeah, I do see bags and boards. Although they do appear to be a little on the yellow side, but let's see. Okay. So this first order was from Fab Thick BK, or I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's just an acronym for something. And let's take a look at the two books that I received. It is X-Men 34 and Marvel Spotlight 29. Um, X-Men 34, no real significance here other than uh, the fact that it's a extremely uh, older Silver Age X-Men. Um, no real key first appearances in here or anything of that nature, just uh, a book I wanted to acquire. Um, not that I'm looking to get every issue of X-Men ever, but it's a book that I didn't have that I wanted to fill in my early run, uh, so I wanted to grab that. And this was a value buy. Um, and what I mean by that is, based on the value and the condition, according to my analysis and calculations, if the book checked out in the advertised condition, which I'm already kind of skeptical about because I do see some uh, some light staining on the front, then it should be uh, a worthwhile purchase from the value perspective. So there's that one. Uh, Marvel Spotlight 29, this is technically the fourth appearance of Moon Knight and not that there's a lot of speculation or value in character uh, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth appearances. I think we stopped counting after maybe third, depending on the character, you know, uh, maybe third or fourth Doctor Doom, third or fourth Miles Morales. Uh, like those are are certainly um, keys that I would consider looking at or, or I would even consider them keys. So the fourth appearance of Moon Knight, not all that spectacular in terms of value and speculation. But um, I'm rereading... Uh, a lot of the older Moon Knights, and, and some of them um, are books that I haven't read. There's some Defenders issues that I'm reading, um, and reading them kind of in chronological order by his appearance. So that's kind of the reading order. Um, and, you know, the, the Marvel Spotlight 28 and 29 stories are what they are. Um, not quite the character that I think we're expecting to see in the Disney Plus series, but you can certainly see... Um, where creators that that took the character and the 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 thought of Mark Spector and who he was, um, you you could see kind of where those foundations were, and and I wanted to read those. So uh, when I read it, I was like, I wonder if Marvel Spotlight Twenty Nine really has a lot of value or uh, is in a lot of demand. Um, so anyway, uh, I went ahead and grabbed it. I found it in, again, less than near mint on Atomic Avenue, and these are the two books. So let's go ahead and take these out and, and grade them um, in no particular order, I guess, since I was talking up the Moon Knight book. Um, so yeah, really, really dirty bag and board. So just the fact that this is going to get a nice, fresh bag and board treatment is going to be an upgrade. Uh, the bags, this is one of those really old uh, grimy, soft bags. It just feels dirty. So in terms of the condition, this was listed as VF2 near mint. Um, and a lot of times I get these because they haven't been pressed. They haven't been cleaned. So what I'm hoping is I get them in the condition that they're listed in, and then I can even further approve on these books. So let's take a look and see. Um, and kind of grade along with me, and we'll, we'll take a look at the defects. So right here at the top, we're starting to see just some general creasing, but, you know, at first glance, pressable defects, right? 
So pretty cool that these could be pressed, that line right in there, in the corner box. Not a ton of color breaks though, right? So that's what I'm liking so far. Um, I don't see any real significant ones. That's probably the largest right there. And then right there, I mean, sometimes you see those types of uh, spine ticks even on modern releases, so not bad. Uh, one also down there by the UPC box as well. So three, I would say major, maybe four, four major color breaking spine ticks and then several that are spine ticks, but they're, they're just creased ticks. They're not really color breaking in that way. Um, there is definitely like a, maybe hard to see on camera, but there's like a film of dirt. So this is where like uh, even some distilled water or just a light immacu clean over the cover would be helpful. I think that that would just make it pop. And the, what's nice is the colors are great on this. Uh, that was one thing that drew me to this cover. I love the chess pieces. Uh, Conqueror Lord, such a goofy name. It's funny because they even kind of in the story say like, what the heck kind of name is Conqueror Lord? So it's, it's, it's funny because you see that in the current modern age Marvel movies where they're always making fun of the costume or the name, but it was actually, they were doing this in, in the Marvel Spotlight 28, 29, uh, two part story. Um, but I, I dig the, the chess piece, the two battle, um, Conqueror Lords cheating, uh, you know, with his chess pieces and so forth. But, um, so I, it's a very like presentable, fun cover, I think, but it needs to have that layer removed. It's, it's just that layer of dirt. But all in all, not bad. Um, really, really not bad. So let's turn it over. And I imagine it's kind of the same, and, and it is. Uh, but I, pretty good condition. Um, again, just your, I'd say your general basic non-color breaking, just tick creases all up and down the spine. Hard to pick up in the white, but um, they're there. Get a little closer, but you can also, yeah, there, you can kind of see them here. There we go. Um, but again, just that layer, you can just see it. It's just a, just a light film of, of dirt that would just need to be kind of wiped down, maybe slightly erased as well. Um, and I would just kind of go through the book lightly and, and then go ahead and press it out. So um, it is definitely a press and clean candidate, um, but I want to grade it as it is. Now, the only other thing I see is there is a potential tear right up there. So I'm going to go ahead and open the front cover and see if it's torn all the way through. Um, and it it looks like it it possibly is right in here. It's hard to tell. I don't want to further tear the book to, to test it out. But right up right up up there is what I'm looking at. It's, it's close. It looks like it's just a hard crease, uh, or just a, it's, it's not torn. Like I, I'm actually pulling, it, it's very close to a tear. It, it could really be a tear. If it is a tear, the, and it is, yeah, I just separated the page. So there's your tear right there. Okay. So I know it's a tear. Um, I'd have to measure the tear to see, but, um, when there's a tear like that anywhere on the front or back cover, it's an immediate eight, five. That's kind of where what my judgment call is with a tear. It's not a super significant tear in terms of the length, but it it has to be like a 9.8 and then a tear and it goes to an 8.5. Based on what we saw, there's obviously more uh, damage to the book. So would I actually press this book now? Maybe. Um, you know, the tear was almost kind of hidden. I may have made it worse by actually pulling the pages apart. It's hard to see. I, I think it's it was just the pages had laid flat for so long that it was almost like they were stuck together, but it was a tear. Um, so anyway, um, it certainly wasn't a 9.8 to begin with, but uh, you kind of work back from the 8.5. So that's the most significant defect. Um, I have a feeling this is probably going to land somewhere around a 6.5. Um, and I say that because I was leaning 7 or 7.5, but the dirt then takes it down another half to full grade for me. So I feel like 6.5 is a pretty uh, fair grade, which is a lot less than the VF to, to uh, near mint. So uh, for Atomic Avenue, uh, that's roughly like a 9.0 or 8, it's an 8.5, 9.0-ish type of, of range. Um, and certainly this book does not fall into that range. So 
I think what I'm finding is particularly with Atomic Avenue is that they are um, the sellers are uh, extreme overgraders. Um, it doesn't mean the books are bad, and a lot of times um, the books are a lot cheaper, so you have to kind of make an adjustment there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and put this in here. Now the tough part is I'm going to put six point five. But do I want to press and clean it at this point? And I don't. Even though I could, I don't want to because I don't necessarily have a cap. Meaning, if I were to press and clean it and it went from a 6.5 to an 8.5, you know, is that something I want to do? I pretty much just look at those on a case by case basis. But when I mark something that is pressable in my system, it basically assumes you're going to try and make it a 9.8 or as close to a 9.8 as possible. Um, and there's no way with that page tear that this book is getting um, a 9.8. Let's get, try to get it down into the, there. So already it pops, it's much better in the, the new bag and board, but uh, unfortunate to get the 6.5, uh, not quite uh, VF uh, near mint. So this is where too, like I have to look at the price and, and maybe this is something I do with my analysis too, as I start making the price adjustments and just basically say, you know, if Atomic Avenue says a book is VF near mint, it means it's fine. Uh, I don't quite know yet what I want to do. Uh, so let's look at the X-Men book. Again, really, really horrible, old, dirty bag and board. Um, and this book was purchased in very fine condition. Um, so will this end up being uh, a very fine copy? Uh, no, it is not. Um, it is... It's, it's already at most a 6.0. I can just tell from experience. I don't have to count all of the, the spine damage there. Um, and then I thought this was a stain, but it's actually almost like a, like a tape pull type of situation. Like a, it's, it's just, it's lifted paper there. Um, well, no, it could be a stain. Yeah, it's possible. It it goes right through the page. You could see the staining. Yeah, it's a stain. Um, but it it's almost like it lifted some of the gloss right off. So I don't know if it was a hot liquid or something, but it's actually stained in multiple places right in here. So now it went down to me from a six. It's got a couple of stains. Now we're probably down to a five. Um, and then again, one of the kind of my... Uh, cheat sheet items is if I look at the top or bottom and I start to see this waviness around there, then I know to me, just in general, the book's probably going to max out at a 5.5. Five. Just because of the copies that I've seen, I don't have a lot of 6.0s or above that have that sort of, I don't know what you call it, but it's just that chippiness where the, the top of the book just starts to unravel. Um... So then it's just a matter of is it a 5.5 five or is it a 5 or is it a 4.5? And I think with the stains, it's probably under a 5. It's probably going to be a 4.5. Again, would I press and clean this? Um, I can, but I'm not going to because of the stains. So I'm going to give this a 4.5. Uh, so I can already tell you that I overpaid for that um, with it being, uh, stained and everything. I, I think you could make the case of that being a 5.0, but the, I have to be realistic too, uh, with the stains and there's, there's just no way, uh, that that's, that's a desirable, uh, or, or it's a book with a desirable condition. So 4.5. Now I will give this the fullback treatment because of the age of the book. Um, I don't want it to get in any worse shape than it is, but that's that's really unfortunate. And I'm looking at the the notes from the seller. There's nothing in there that talks about um, any stains on the front cover that would um, detract from the grade uh, the way this does. So that that's that's really unfortunate. And again, the reason I bought it was because I looked at books. Uh, Listed in very fine. Um, this book came up on my tracking sheet. And based on the analysis that I plugged in, if it truly was very fine, then I really got a heck of a deal. 
So these particular bags that I got, for some reason, they're super stiff and tight. They're just slightly smaller than um, the typical <laughs> bags I get, so I often have to kind of force gravity a little bit to get the books to slide down. But again, looks better. It looks it. It just looks like a book. I'm trying to get it out of the glare that you'd put in your PC here with the nice uh, silver bag and silver full back here. Um, so again, I got the extra protection, but I gave it the four or five and it is what it is. So um, that's the first two. A little disappointing, but that was one seller. So the next order will be from a different seller. And I'm hoping that they're, you know, a little bit more accurate with their grading. Okay, so here is the second order. Um, this is from a seller named Four Star 77 on Atomic Avenue. Um, and the book is marked Fragu. So that means, uh, you know, that that's code for the um, postal delivery worker to um, bend and stomp the heck out of it. I'm just kidding. Uh, caution, do not crush, bend, or fold with a happy face. So... Again, if you're thinking about mashing this one, you see the happy face, and you're like, no, not this one, not gonna do it. So let's go ahead and unbox this order. So the other two books were, I would say, more of a, um, a value slash curiosity you know, trying to see if I could maybe grab a couple of raw books uh, that were listed at a price under where I thought they should be based on the condition and uh, piqued my curiosity. And uh, unfortunately, they were grossly overgraded, so the values didn't quite work out. Um, this order is a little bit different because I wanted, I didn't mind paying the money because I felt like the books that I was uh, willing to acquire or wanted to acquire um, had a higher ceiling, even in the conditions they were listed in. Um, because these two books in a 9.8 is uh, out of my league. So uh, sometimes you kind of have to make that sacrifice when you're, you're on the hunt for a grail or something like that. Um, you know, I don't subscribe to the um, low grade is better than no grade theory. Uh, you know, I'm not going to pay just any amount so that I get the book in any condition. It has to all line up and make sense to me. Um, but to some degree, I think I do subscribe to it. Like I said, if you're, if you're chasing a character, you're chasing spec, you're chasing value, whatever it is that you're chasing, um, somewhere along the journey you have to get the book <laughs> whether that's the final destination is the acquisition is that your final step in the chase um, or is it more about just getting a copy and then deciding later do you want to slab it and be done do you want to upgrade it and so forth and um, you have to first acquire the book and with my process of acquiring books um, I also want to do a lot of research and that's part of the fun for me is doing the research. It's part of the hunt. It's part of the chase. Uh, it's something that I really enjoy. Okay, so I'm looking at my notes uh, from the packing slip. And it says, <clears throat> let's see, well, I'll have, maybe do it this way. Yeah. Okay, so sold this one at a show. So I gave you a slight upgrade. Enjoy. Uh, okay. So, um, probably saw on the packing slip there the two books. Um, so I was going to show one before the other, but now I'm kind of curious about uh, both, really. Let's just show both. Here we go. Uh, Captain Marvel, 17. This is the second cameo appearance of Kamala Khan. Uh, I have uh, thought about this, and I've talked about it lightly. I don't have a lot of Ms. Marvel spec. I, I just... When I got back into comic book collecting, she was a character where the spec and the book values had already been on the rise. 
So the late printing that features Kamala Khan on the cover of, of Captain Marvel 17, uh, that was already expensive at the time, and now it's it's crazy expensive. And it's a great cover, um, and it makes sense. It actually, this one kind of stayed within my range of affordability, and especially to get it raw like this. So I'm really, really curious because I'm looking at the book, and it, from the back end board, it looks looks great. Um, man, okay, so I'm going to hold this off because I bought this, uh, and the seller listed this uh, very fine to near mint, but in the description, he said that he graded this book as an 8.5. Um, let's, let's wait and see on that one. Okay, uh, so this is the other book, and this is, you know, depending on how specific you are about titles. Um, the full title, Adventure Into Fear with Man-Thing, number 11. Uh, a lot of people refer to this book as Fear 11. And this is the first appearance of Jennifer Kale. Uh, she is rumored to appear in some property. <laughs> um, it's been all but confirmed. I think it was sort of confirmed that the character Jennifer Kale is coming. Like she is on her way into the MCU. Um, Man-Thing controls the nexus of all realities. It would not shock me if he was... I, I think he's going to be in, in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I, I think that when Doctor Strange and America Chavez are hopping through portals and trying to get through to the proper reality, I think that they're going to discover the nexus, which was hinted in WandaVision... Uh, and there's, I, I don't think that's a coincidence that Wanda is going to be in the Doctor Strange movie. So I believe that Man-Thing will be there as this gatekeeper. And I don't think he'll have a significant role. I think that he will be there. He will be this gatekeeper of the Nexus. Um, and it'll be some, some being that the characters have to interact with. And it could be sort of like Heimdall in Thor, like where, um, you know, it may be something where they are given tasks to um, to figure out along like how to deal with man thing and how to use him to basically uh, transport themselves from reality to reality, um, and so it's almost like a, a, a it's it's a reality or universe keeper kind of role. Okay, enough about that. Anyway, this is the first appearance of Jennifer Kale, um, which is a character that has ties to Man Thing and the multiverse and all of that. So I think that all of this is. Um, uh, it's worthwhile spec at this point, and I think a lot of people were trying to hunt this book down, and when I started to look for it, um, there was a copy on Atomic Avenue. Now, this seller also listed this book, um, fine slash very fine 7.0, spine stress with color break and other cover wear, um, and then technically listed under the very fine category. Now, um, so the first thing I'm going to do is look for tears, right? Uh, it definitely has spine stress. I mean, those are hard color breaking spine ticks. So um, could this be pressed? Certainly, but would it do, would it really improve overall? That remains to be seen. The first thing I will say is the, the colors are great. So I'd love to get this slabbed because I, I love the dark green. I mean, the depiction of uh, the of man thing and also just the the style of it it's fantastic I, i'm very very uh happy to have this book in my possession uh flipping it over um the back actually looks pretty strong there's some page crunching or folding up in here um let's see if i can get that yeah there you go uh, some spotting but really not bad I think the Marvel Spotlight was dirtier than this one. Um, so the back looks really strong. The back almost looks like a 9 or a 9-2, right? Minimal wear. Look who's smiling now. At, add. Um, yeah, I mean, I would definitely say it's a pressing candidate based on the back alone. Um, again, it probably doesn't need a lot of cleaning, maybe just a gentle wipe down. But um, looking at the trade, the lettering is pretty strong pretty bold white. Um, so not a lot of creases, just just random creases in here, you know, up and uh, right next to width. 
you know, that could come out in the press, but I don't know. Um, there's another one that's pretty significant. So overall, again, it, w it could be press, but I'm looking at the grade now, and then I'm trying to think, what would it max out as? It certainly couldn't be pressed up into a 9.8, but it might be worth a try just to clean it up. But gosh, those spine ticks are so harsh. Like, those are just drastic quarter-inch ticks that, that break color there. So that's a tough one. Like even counting them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's at least a dozen of those. So I'll typically kind of take the total number of those really stressful ticks and just kind of divide it by two and then start, you know, looking at potentially even knocking a half grade for each two. So talking maybe about a 3.0 down from a 9.8. So that's probably like a 6.5 just based on the spine damage and spine wear. Um, but is it less than that? Um, again, looking at kind of my cheat of looking at the top and bottom, uh, it's pretty sharp. Pretty sharp. The bottom is worse than the top right there uh, by the swamp. You can see there, there's a, a, a stress line with a crease there and a color break. Um, I, it's funny one I don't even check the corners out too much but blunted corners uh, that one's not too bad so overall it's it's a strong copy um, there aren't any tears I'm leaning towards a 6.5 I think a 6.5 is more than fair I don't think it's a I don't think it's above a 7 honestly I think it's 6.5 is a very fair grade um, just slightly overgraded. I think the seller gave it a 7 um, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then looking at the pages, um, it's probably an off white to white. Um, I was going to say it's, it feels like borderline, uh, white pages. So if it's borderline, it's probably off white to white. So there you go. Uh, so not bad, not bad. Um, six, five for that one. So let me go ahead and get that in the bag and board. Now the question is, would I mark it uh, as a press candidate? Um, yeah, if I do, it's going to indicate that I, I could press this and get it into a range that would, I, I just don't think that those creases are gonna really, like if the creases are gone and the spine is the way it is, is it, is it a seven? Uh, okay, maybe. Maybe and so I'm gonna go ahead and mark it as a press. Uh, I'm trying to not get emotional about it. Like, oh, I found a book. It has some spec value. It could pop in when a character or two appear in an MCU property. So, yeah, let me let me mark it as a press because I think it's you know I've got this 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 key book or something. I'm trying not to have that kind of um, reaction. Right, so I'm just trying to be honest with myself and with the grade. Um, but wow, what a great book! Uh, wasn't cheap, um, but I was comparing it with uh, eBay prices at the time and slab values in that uh, 7.0 range, like somewhere between a six and an eight. And so I'll show you kind of when I I won't show you all of my analysis, but when I do the analysis, what I do is I say, uh, kind of give me the ballpark average grade of like a 6.5 to an eight. And I kind of lump those together because sometimes there's not a lot of data at specific grades. So I kind of just take the overall average and then I compare it to the raw book and then look at fees and so forth and, and make the decision. Um, and I realized <laughs> I talked that whole time about uh, fear 11 and I didn't even open this up yet for grading. So let's do that. And I'm a little nervous. Uh, it was very, very kind and generous to the seller, um, or of the seller, to go ahead and, and still send me the book. Uh, he had every right to um, cancel it, right, and say, not available, sorry. Uh, but here we go. So uh, really, really strong so far. Um, upper corner looks good. Spine looks very, very good. Uh, that corner... A little bit of an issue there, but not bad. Um, not a 9.8 because of that corner, but, you know, 9.6. There's just a slight, slight crease uh, right there. 
hard to pick up. It's very slight, but to me, that's what's going to make it. It's going to pull it down into the 9.6 area. Um, super sharp everywhere else, though. Um, and that's it. <laughs> I don't. Even, I'm going to start sweating here. Um, it looks good. The only thing is the. I'm looking at the staple, right in here, and I don't. I worry when the staple gets pushed in, like it it's it's being pulled in this direction. And see how the page just slightly hangs over. Sometimes that means the book has been pressed. And sometimes it doesn't. But it's like when both when I see that with both staples, it's like the staple. I don't quite know what to make of it. Uh, do I think the book was pressed? I don't know. Uh, but there are no spine ticks whatsoever. Not not a single spine tick up and down the spine. I'm just going to open it here for a second before I start sweating. Um, just to open it up to the centerfold. So, like, what I want to check and see is, are there any, like, staple marks on either side of the page? And I don't see them. It looks, it looks normal. It looks like, and those are tough staples too, right? They're really high up off the spine. Um, it does have the digital sticker, so all looks good. So, it's a 9.6. Yeah. Um, that's it. Just a little bit of general Marvel paper waviness, but not bad. That book is a 9.6. I don't even want to touch it and hold it anymore. I'm going to get out another full back. So I think I might have... I, I don't want to say that I've scored on that one because um, I want to compare it to the values because at the time I was willing to pay that money for... A book in an 8.5 so now we'll take a look and see what the value is of a 9.6 um, so let me load this into the bag and board and there it is gorgeous so I think I can officially say I have a I have a little bit of Kamala Khan spec now <laughs> um, oh, I'm very pleased so kind of the tale of two sellers right um, these two books, grossly overgraded, fun, nostalgic, old, but I spent a lot. I, I paid a lot more, and now I can actually, I can even see a crease going down the middle of this book. Um, right there, you can see it going right in the middle. Anyway, um, still a four or five. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm excited to add these. These are great. Like, I, I would love one day to have a room to show off these these older books that really have meaning of, of the, the shows that I watched, I, the movies I watched with my family, the, the stories I read as a kid, the stories I read digitally. Um, and then I'm able to add um, some spec books too. Um, now the only thing I'm looking at is on the cover of this one, is it scratched? It's hard to say. Yeah, I just noticed that. A little bit of scratch in the trade dress. So I don't know if you picked that up when I was grading it. So. I'll have to think about that. It's not, there's there's some scratch right on the cover. Um, I don't think it's marking it down to a, a, an 8.5, but I might regrade this as a 9.4. Um, so let me do that real quick. I'll regrade this as a 9.4 just to be on the safe side to pick up that little scratch in the trade. It's, it's, it's a definite eyesore, um, but the book itself, the structure of the book is pretty solid. Um, yeah, and I'm getting, I was getting a little too ahead of myself too here. There's just a, there's a little bit of a page fringing happening right there too. Just a little bit of a clipping of the front cover. Um, the paper's hanging on, but it's definitely some just little, yeah. Is it still a 9.4? Do I want to make it a 9.2? It's really tough. I'm being really, really nitpicky here. I still feel like it's a 9.4. I'm going to regrade it as a 9.4, uh, remark it, and put it in. Um, we'll play around with the numbers and see um, if there's a, a huge drop-off from 9.4 and 9.2 just to see. But unfortunately, i got to take off the 9.6 and make it a 9.4. I think a 9.4 is fair on that one, even with a couple of minor issues. Uh, only because the spine is so well-preserved. So we've got the corner, the scratch... The tiny, tiny tear or pull of the paper right up there on the cover. So 
Nine four ish. Um, it's probably a book I would send in for grading and see what it comes back with, but I, I think we're good otherwise. All right, let's look and see at what I paid for these books and let's compare um, the conditions that they were stated uh, they were in originally versus what I just graded them and kind of see, um, you know, where they, did I really find value? Did I, did I reach for these? Uh, let's take a look. Okay, here we go. This is the order analysis for, I would definitely say, a tale of two orders. Um, first order, Marvel Spotlight 29 and X-Men 34. Uh, I paid uh, $40 and $80 for a total of $120 back on March 23rd. Both, both orders were placed on March 23rd, um, and they arrived in, like I said, uh, just a handful of days. It was very quick. Uh, so thank you to both sellers for shipping the orders quickly. Uh, now, uh, comparing these to the fair market value, um, and you're kind of look, actually looking at both of these at the same time along with me. Um, so 120 for the first order. The second order, uh, Captain Marvel 17 and Fear 11, uh, was just about the same price. Uh, I did have to pay for shipping. This seller does not offer free shipping, um, and I really wanted those two books. <laughs> And when that happens, then you end up paying for shipping. Um, but in the end, it was it's very interesting. I did, really didn't plan it, but it was roughly the same cost. So it's almost like now looking at the two orders, which of the two would you rather have knowing the grades, knowing um, what we know after the fact? Um, I know I have an opinion, and I'll kind of save it to the end, but uh, there is essentially a $90 book in each order. Um, the Captain Marvel, uh, at 63, uh, was huge, uh, fair market value being $63 for that. I think it's only going to increase. I said it was the first appearance of Kamala Khan. It's listed as the second cameo. Uh, you know, that's fine with me. I, I'm not going to debate on whether or not it's her first appearance or second cameo. Uh, to me, it's, one of the pieces of the Kamala Khan story. And that's how I look at a character's first appearance. Like for me, the first appearance of Wolverine is Hulk 180 and 181. I think both of them combined are his first appearance. I think, you know, I think of Venom. I can go on and on and on, right? For Venom, ASM, 298, 299, 300, 316, 315, right? They're all kind of telling the story. Um, most collectors slash speculators will argue with you and tell you that this is the one book to have and they do that because that's the book they have um but this captain marvel 17 i think it's one of the books that really kind of is part of her origin story it's part of her first appearance her introduction into the mcu and kind of the turning point part of the marvel now it's it's there's a lot going for it um and i paid 37 dollars and eight cents uh, once you uh, distribute the cost of shipping uh, across the two books here. So for $37, uh, I got a $63 book. Uh, for Fear 11, I paid $80.08, and the raw fair market value of that book is currently trending up at $92.35. Um, so I think as people become aware of Jennifer Kale and, and who she is and, and what her role is going to be alongside Man-Thing, um, I think that because of this book being from 1972, uh, I think that there's a lot of room for growth. Um, and I could see it being, you know, a $150 raw book here uh, coming up very soon. Uh, so that's why I wanted to jump on it for uh, $80. Now, the other $80 book was X-Men 34, uh, raw value of $91.66. And then the Marvel Spotlight um, was the only one I slightly overpaid, or you could argue I did pay fair market value. Uh, $40 for a $39.18 value book. Um, this particular seller had free shipping. So um, again, the orders kind of ended up being about the same cost. So it's really interesting to, to compare these side by side, I think. Now, um, I'm not going to do the whole 9498 thing. Uh, well, maybe just the 98 because it is fun. Uh, let me do this real quick, just so you could see like, what are these books? Uh, again, I we know they're not nine eights, but it, it is fun to look at the value. Um, so X-Men, uh, yeah, there is no nine eight for, 
for Fear 11. Uh, but even X-Men 34, it's $2,000. And, you know, it, if we're looking at the slab value, it's going to be insane. Um, the CGC value here is is nuts. Um, anyway, uh, let's get rid of those because I think that that's confusing me at least. So let's get rid of these grades and let's plug in the actual grades here. So looking at the books, uh, Fear 11 I had as a 6.5 and it didn't have... So there are no grades, no recorded uh, sales, I should say, for a 6.5. A 6.0 is 170. So plug that in. There's the 170. So even as a 6, um, it's a $57.70 profit. So I'll even leave it. I'll downgrade it just so we can see the data uh, and leave it as a 6. So if you were on the fence as I was grading that one, you're like, no, there's no way that's a 6.5. It's, it's got to be a 6. Um, even a 5.5 five is 120 bucks. So uh, if I plug that in, it's still... It's, you could argue that's a break-even grade, so it'd have to be 6 or above to, to get some value. But I think that um, I'm looking at the GPA data on that one, and uh, it's those are older reported uh, sales for slabbed fear 11s so i think as collectors are sending in their current copies based on the the news i think that um, we'll see some increases there okay um captain marvel 17 i gave it a 9.4 question mark um i don't believe that that marking on the trade is going to bring it down by that much but uh here in a 9.4 uh, gosh, really close to the Fear 11, a $54.70 profit. Um, if you're telling me I'm overgrading and we want to give it a 9.2, um, obviously then I take a hit. So I'd have to get a 9.4. I first thought it was a 9.6. Um, weird that, uh, again, it's maybe it's just not a lot of data. Um, uh, I think 9.8 is kind of where it's at. That's what everybody's going for at 161. Uh, but uh, 9.4 at 124, I think that that's fair. 80 to 120 dollars for that, um, and again for the 37 dollars I paid for it, that's fine. I, I'm I'm okay with that. It was very generous of the seller to go ahead and um, say that he had the 8.5, which didn't have any value. Um, so if I did grade that as an 8.5. I wouldn't, it's not really a slab worthy comic. It's almost like if you're asking, would I grade this book? Uh, would I send it in for grading, I should say, for professional grading? Uh, the answer is no, you do not. Uh, but in a 9.4, 9.4 you do. Uh, 9.2 uh, depends. Let's see the Ms. Marvel show. Let's see if her collection of first appearances and origin books kind of pop. And then we'll maybe circle back and look at that one again. Um, X-Men 34, this one's going to be rough. Um, my grade was a 4.5. So yeah, $77. I could have just, for that, I could have just bought it slabbed in a 4.5. Um, so this, he told me. Now this, I was told, uh, or I saw on the listing that this was a 7.0. Uh, or, or sorry, uh, very fine. So uh, he was claiming, I mean, a very fine grade is an 8.0. What is this book in an 8.0? It is $160. So that's where I thought, well, for $80, I would get the book in an 8.0, clean it up a little bit, maybe buff it into an 8.5, but even if it's an 8.0, okay, there's some value here. Uh, almost a $50 gain. Uh, this book was signific significantly lower, in my opinion, with the staining and the uh, and just um, just the poor condition that it was in. Again, I've seen I've seen that condition many times, and it's definitely around five. Um, and again, I I I feel like without the stains, it's a five five. With the stains, it's probably down to a four five. Um, you know, again, if you catch a grader on a good day, maybe it's a 5, but even then, uh, even in a 5.0, um, it's 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 not, yeah, it's 105. It, it, 105 between 77, it's, it's just, they're all kind of around the same grade. Like, nobody really, really wants 
that specific book. It's a it's a non key. It's a filler issue. Um, so not not pleased with that purchase. It was just when I was like, hey, I'm a big X Men fan and collector, and wanted to to grab that and add that into my collection. Lastly, the Marvel Spotlight again uh, had high hopes for it. It looked good, but then once I found that there was a tear on it, had to drop it to a six five. Uh, and that unfortunately um, brought the the slab value down to a 55, which meant if I did send it in for grading, I would lose money uh, if I were to evaluate it today. Um, now this was a VF to NM, which means you know you're talking about is it an 80? Is it an 85? Right, 93. What about a nine? Uh, 9 is 115, so it's not a crazy valuable book. It certainly uh, gets up there in a 9.8, which is nice. It's almost 400 bucks. Um, and, you know, 8.5 without the tear, you know, it's 93. I maybe uh, got it for, uh, you know, $20 uh, less than what it should be selling for, roughly, if you factor in the cost for grading. Uh, but then with the tear and the other defects, dropping it to 6.5, um, it's not. So... If you're looking at the CGC value of these two books and what I paid, uh, you can see here that it was a pretty hefty, substantial loss of negative uh, 52. Uh, if you look at the other uh, order, obviously $112 uh, profit uh, at those grades. So yeah, um, quite interesting. I really did not intend to have those two orders kind of line up side by side in terms of the the values and what I paid and, and, and all of that. Uh, but it's a good comparison of two sellers on the same platform, right? Like, and it could be any platform. It could be eBay. Um, when any sort of marketplace where you're buying, it could be two different LCSs, right? On one hand, you have one seller that is grossly overgrading. Um, and then you have to kind of factor that in when you're looking at the price I paid. Um, from a, uh, even a raw value perspective, I paid fair market value when I was like, well, based on the grades listed, those the price is much, much lower. Well, it's much, much lower because it was overgraded. On the other hand, from a different seller who maybe has a bit more accurate grading, even the, the Fear 11 that was listed as a 7, I gave it a 6.5. Um, I, I have no problem with that. That That's fine. I'm a harsh grader. So um, it certainly could be a seven, but the grades were more or less accurate. And then the seller was nice enough to say, listen, my eight five is gone. I'm not going to cancel your order. I have another copy in a better grade. I'm not going to charge you any more money. So here you go. And that's another reason why I try and find sellers, reputable sellers to buy from repeatedly, because I love that customer service and I want to send my money in exchange for collectibles to those sellers that that earn my business. Uh, so really interesting uh, kind of uh, experience there and, and happy that I was able to record it and share it with you because um, the four books are all over the place. Like I said, there's value, there's speculation, there's nostalgia, um, there's hype, there's FOMO, there's all of that kind of wrapped into those four books. Um, and it sort of defines me as a collector. I'm not really defined by that one thing. I, I look at a lot of different angles. I'm influenced by a number of ways. Uh, but in the end, it's all for the love of comic books and the hobby, um, of, of which that I enjoy a great deal. So I appreciate you uh, letting me share this with you. And I also appreciate you watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.